if you ask a student at any level, what is the one thing that they struggle with the most, one thing that they have to deal the most at, and one of the most common answers would be procrastination. In this video, I want to address the single most thing that you guys have to actually deal with. And hopefully by the end of this video, you have far better chances of significantly reducing the amount of time that you actually spend procrastinating throughout the day. I am going to share a few strategies myself when I am feeling that I am going to be procrastinating eventually, or I am procrastinating already, so that by doing so I can shake myself out of it and focus on what the th tasks are at hand and be able to make sure I can complete them by the end of the day as well. Hi everyone, I'm Aidan, a medical student studying in England and I make videos on studying productivity and anything else in my life that goes on to make myself a bit more capable and share the same things with you so you can make your life a bit more capable than what it was before. Let's start off by talking a bit of the concept of procrastination and how we can use reverse psychology of it and instead make it to our benefit, especially when we are studying. The thing is, we have this incredible mental tool in our brain called self-deception. Say for example you are watching a video or playing a game, the more tendency is that once you are actually coming to nearer to the end or nearer to the time that you allocated that video game to be at, let's just watch the next one, uh, let's just spend five more minutes on the video game that I'm doing. And what tends to actually happen is that that one video that you're supposed to be sent turned out to be several more that you watched subsequently after that. The question is, why do you actually do it? It's mainly because of the dopamine hits that you get by making sure that you're spending a lot longer on the things that you like. And what happens is that those dopamine hits become more so addictive that allows you to procrastinate a lot more and not focus on the things that are more necessarily more important or perhaps even urgent, such as studying for an exam that's coming up. What tends to happen is that once you have gotten into that rabbit hole and then you have to actually say, oh, let's start studying, you're less likely to actually get onto that, mainly because you then realise that studying will not actually give you the dopamine hits and, and instead you try not to associate all of that good feeling or the, the feeling that you get after getting the dopamine to studying, therefore you're actually more and more likely to procrastinate and not actually focus on studying and or any other important thing. Here's the thing, this is, there's a reason why I call self-deception quite powerful itself. It's mainly because of the mindset that's around it. You can very easily, say when you're studying, and then you're about to be feeling that you're going to be procrastinating in a bit. You can always tell your mind that, let's just spend five minutes more. And what seems to happen is that rather than the mind, mental mindset that you're studying is really daunting, it doesn't seem like so anymore. Because all you're doing is you're just associating studying with five more minutes, but just associating short term. That way the task itself feels a lot smaller. And what tends to happen as a result of it is that if you go over this for a longer period of time, this becomes a habit. Your dopamine hits start to be reflective of the, your studying. You can start to to get into this flow state of actually writing or working, at which point you don't necessarily even have to worry about procrastinating or delving your mind into something else than rather than what's important or at hand in front of you. And that way it allows you to accomplish all of the things that you attended to. Uh, the task eventually gets completed exactly as how you wanted it. So with the overarching concept itself out of the way, let's talk about the next six actionable steps that you can take yourself that I use to actually further benefit your game and only focus on the things at hand, the important ones, rather than the things that only give you short-term joy. The first step to begin with is to be aware of when you are going to procrastinate. This is really important mainly because of the fact that if you need to actually solve a problem, you need to realise that there is a problem that exists in the first place to begin with. Because what tends to happen mainly is that it is very easy for us to procrastinate for long periods of time without us realising that oh we have actually been procrastinating whereas we should be doing one of the things that we have planned out to do. This is again mainly because you have been rather enjoying yourself or anything that gives you the reason to procrastinate with. And only after spending several hours or several months of time, or a large amount of time, then you realise at a bit more of an urgent basis that you need to get this done and get it sorted immediately. And th because of these reasons and making sure that you don't actually get into this habit of having to do everything on a bit more of an urgent basis or where you're stressed and don't have enough time allocated to the things that you wanted to do. This becomes crucial that you have to actually realise the moment where you have started to procrastinate, or just a bit before that, where you're feeling that you are going to procrastinate, to be able to break the cycle immediately. Try not to focus too much on your feelings and how your emotions are when you're looking at yourself on, at the third person angle and seeing all of the things that you have been doing. Mainly because what you will realise, and it is rather interesting, the act of procrastination essentially boils down to your emotions of, of being fearful. Procrastination 
is just your body getting into your fight or flight response. That has been going on for a million of years, where your brain has put in a mechanism to actually be able to detect danger and make sure that we are away from the potential harm that an event can actually possibly cause us. However, what has happened over the years is that our brain is not able to distinguish what is a potential danger and what is an unrealistic danger as well. This is mainly because as to why people have certain phobias against some animals or certain things. In many ways like these, our brains have been programmed to be able to produce these irrational fears, even though they don't necessarily have an, an intended harm to ourselves. So when it comes to, for example, complex tasks that we have set out to do, and when we start to procrastinate, what tends to happen is that our brain psychologically thinks that we are doing a terrible job at doing the task. Our brain kicks in the flight response of it, in the intention to be able to delve away from the actual task itself, to keep us away from the unrealistic harm. This could very well be your case, and it has been for me as well. I have a certain assignment due, uh, I have to prepare for an exam, but the act of actual preparation, or the act of the exam looming over, has an inherent fear in itself, being able to actually succeed in it or not. One way to actually cope with it is whenever you get into this fight or flight mechanism, try to always go for fight instead. So what, what this means is that you're, you're somewhat negating the fact that you have to run away from something, but rather you're facing it head on. And when, what you're doing is that once your body kicks into that response, you're far less likely to get into procrastination because you're not intending to run away from it, but instead you're wanting to fight for it, having your emotions and everything in check while also acknowledging them. That way you're able to do the task and continue with it and continue to completion as well. Be aware of your inner dialogue. You need to pay attention to all of the excuses that you're making to yourself when you are intending to study all of the things that you keep saying that are putting it off from you doing it. And what tends to happen is that you're somewhat tricking your brain and at some point manipulating as well that you're doing something or a task that it will give you somewhat of a joy. But unfortunately what your brain is not realizing is that this joy is only short term. It's similar to again the dopamine hits that I talked about at the start of the video. It's not going to be beneficial in the longer term. It can be very damaging in itself as often. Well. Say for example you have to wake up early and you have set yourself an alarm and what tends to happen from there is whenever the time comes Comes. You're somewhat awake, but you hit on snooze to actually get two minutes or five minutes more a bit of rest in bed. And you keep on doing it over and over again, and what tends to happen as a result? You're in bed for 15, possibly 30 more minutes than you intended to. So when it comes to these type of things, you need to always evaluate yourself exactly as to the reason why you're p being able to hit the snooze. By doing so, you, you can actually see what are the pros and the cons of it. What are the benefits of having to actually get up early as what you have intended to do and what's the consequences are and similarly what are the benefits of hitting the snooze and what are the disadvantages that happen with it. This logical approach will actually allow you to have a bit more of a long term and be able to lean more towards onto things that are more important to you, especially the tasks that you have set out to do. And what tends to happen is on a longer term basis, this is something that I have realized. The things, the reasons why I was actually for example hitting the snooze button are telling myself all of those things of not getting into the work, those excuses was simply just excuses on their own. Step 4. Remember that procrastination is a choice. Your brain might be telling you to actually be able to procrastinate, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to procrastinate at that given time as well. Being able to override what your thoughts and what your brain is telling you is an incredibly powerful tool. Say for example your brain is telling you to do one thing, but instead you have to actually disregard it and instead do the other thing, which is possibly the actual right thing to do in the longer term basis as well. By doing so and actually accomplishing it, it will give you a sense of liberation at the same time. This is one of the reasons why in the personal development community. There is lots of things going on about how spending a whole 30 days of having cold showers or even spending your 30 days a bit differently and seeing how you are able to cope up with it. This gives you that you are in complete control and that way you are able to actually justify exactly what things are important to you and just do them rather than your brain or anyone else psychologically th saying that these are the inappropriate things to do. Of course, acknowledging all of those ones are equally as important, but you need to also be able to justify what things are right and be able to go with them. Step five is break the task down. Breaking up the task of what some people also call it as chunking is something that a lot of people already do. It's the whole essence that if you say, for example, if you have a 3000 word essay due in, in the next month or so, you can easily break it down to rather than just focusing on it as a 2000 word essay, you can do it instead of chunks of 100 or 200 words every night daily or somewhat of a regular basis. By dividing the overarching assignment into smaller things, it automatically starts to feel a bit more manageable. By doing so, you, it doesn't feel as daunting at them anymore. You not only are you able to actually complete the assignment in its full 
top quality as to what you are wanting to do but it's not actually dealing with as much you know having to do all of them in a short burst i also made a dedicated video on how i was able to do one of my medical school essays in one and a half days time i'll provide a link of that up above so if that's something to your interest you can have a look and exactly be able to have a walkthrough of what my overall process was finally up is step six and this could potentially be the most important one for the long-term sustainability and it is to start and continue going. The hardest part to break away from the cycle of procrastination is to actually get started on the task. However, that initial spark, the initial ignition to get you started in, in itself takes a huge amount of time and possibly could be the hardest out of any of the other parts of the actual cycle in itself. Mainly because of the fact that once you get started, it doesn't feel all of that intimidating anymore. And because you have now started it, you are bound to actually continue it up until you start to feel when that you're going to procrastinate next as well. However, even if you are going to get feelings that you are going to procrastinate, you need to still be able to keep going. And there's lots of ways in which you can do this, but either that be by making sure that your desk is always clean, are ready to you whenever you need to sit down, you can immediately get into the rhythm of things. The other could be possibly that getting rid of all of your distractions, things that easily can actually make your mind go somewhere else rather than just focusing on the task up ahead of you or even if you like you can always do it with a, amongst a group so you can have someone accountable where you if you are about to start procrastinating you have someone there to account for you and you also do can do the same thing for the other person at the same time of, of this obviously you need to make sure that they are someone that you can easily work with by actually finding that someone and being able to do that regularly you are far more likely to actually continue working only because of the fact that you because you have your friend supporting you and it, and this this becomes this further support that you're not actually doing this on your own. Overall, what you then start to actually realize that even if you start doing a couple of things that I've mentioned up above, you'll find this feeling of satisfaction or you're more content with yourself, but mainly because of the fact that you're not doing any of the destructive habits that in the long term basis will damage you, but mainly because you are in the right control of mind and you're doing things exactly as how you want them to be rather than listening to just your brain solely and going with what naturally comes to your brain and hopefully you are able to actually get into this encouraging and incredibly empowering mindset which will only make boost your productivity and hopefully also boost up your grades or any of the tasks that you are intending yourself onto so that was the strategies that i use whenever i'm feeling procrastination and i still do up at this stage because procrastination truly actually never leaves you just have to have things to manage with it and be the best to deal with it which naturally comes with time and practice in itself if you did like this video drop a like and if you haven't already subscribed do consider clicking on the subscription button as well as the bell icon so you stayed up to date with any of my studying tips and techniques videos that come up as at the same time in the meanwhile i'll see you on the other video that i recommended